Hey everybody, it's Pete from Old Man Overland back at Overland Expo here in Flagstaff, Arizona. A huge show going on here. It's the first of the season for the Overland Expos. Today we're going to walk around, see some old friends, but more excitingly, we're going to be looking for new and exciting products to share with you today. So let's get started. So we're here at Cook Partners, partner stove with Jaime Agato, the current owner of the company. Huge fan, I'm a huge fan of this. I have their small stove, their large stove, their frying pans. And you know, when we think about stoves, we think about those old pump white gas things we might've had in the Cub Scouts, or maybe something you screw a propane bottle in. This is at a different level. And Jaime, tell us a little about Cook Partner, how it got started and, and some of your products. So the, the product, you know, like most good things, were developed out of need, um, and they, they, they were developed for the, the rivers, river runners. Uh, they were lugging heavy uh, old equipment, uh, and the efficiency, so they wanted to lightweight, and they wanted efficient stove, so they weren't lugging uh, excess propane. Uh, so it, it got started, and the burner, everything was built around the burners, and to get them, get them to be able to cook hot, and get them to be able to be efficient. So the system, once the orifice size on the burners was developed and, and was deemed adequate for Harvey Partner who developed it, a very meticulous, smart individual, um, then it, it realized that the, the traditional eight inch system wasn't working like what's running on most of your grills. Uh, uh, so this is actually a 27 PSI system, so high pressure, low volume. Um, so there, therefore, it, the efficiency came up, and then the lightweightness. Th therefore, you know, uh, the aluminum came, and every one of these pieces is handmade yeah. in Pocatello, Idaho. And so the 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 same guy actually from the beginning is still there welding on these, and so the meticulousness carries through. Yeah, the thing uh, I, the thing I love about these are it's like a little suitcase. Yes. And you think, oh well, it's aluminum; it must come from China or it must yeah, be an import. No. But then right, right on the front of it here it says "Made in Pocatello, Idaho," yes. and uh, and you know they're not inexpensive, but boy, I, from what I heard you talking to someone else a little earlier. They last forever. So yeah. tell us a little bit about, you know, the, the product line you have and some of the price points, and then a yep. couple of stories, if you would. Yeah. So the um, the 22 inch, which is that guy over there that Mark's cooking on, that's our flagship one. Um, it's a two burner. This is just a smaller version of it. This is the 18 inch, or yeah, 18 inch two burner. Basically the same thing, minus two inches on each side, and the the, the burner centers are a little wider on that one. You know, I remember when I ordered mine, because right now on this one, I had a, 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 a goose gear setup, so yeah. I had to have it come out. But you can actually order which side you want the propane yeah. to yep. come out of, yep. left or right. Left or right. Uh, but in talk, talking about bulletproof, this thing, I have had this in the mud, in the sand. I basically got <laughs> home, I hosed it off. Yeah. And let it dry oh, yeah. out. Yeah, no, the, uh, you know, the, the, the knobs are recessed. Pretty simple design, but pretty rugged design at the same time. Um, and the strength is been focused on, on where it needs to be uh, with nothing else. Uh, bare bones uh, and yeah, the, the toughness of them. Yeah. And most people aren't nice with these things because they realize they don't have to pamper them. That, so they, you, you know, right. it, it's not a, a thing that you have to set it somewhere. They, they get, once people get past the first scratch, they're just shoving them. It's, another, right. it's another tool. Yeah, yeah it's, like so. a, it's like a tool in a toolbox. Yeah. You know, the other thing I, I love were these, were these pans. And again, yes. you know, I bought many of these. They last about two or three, not this one, yeah. but a lot of things you see on Amazon, you buy it two or three times, it's, it warps, yeah, no. it scratches. Yep. These also are handmade, is that right? Yes, yeah, we, we have the, the fixtures. We, we pulled them up there at the shop. Uh, the, so they're aluminum, hard anodized aluminum. And um, so b because of that, the heat dissipation on the aluminum makes it to where there's no hot spot. So once, you know, if, if we give it heat here, it's naturally going to draw all the way through. The thickness was, was again, d done through ex excessive testing based on the burners. Um, so when, when you 
use our Dutch ovens, our griddles with our stoves, then you complete the system. Now you've made the system and you really maximize the efficiency of the fuel consumption. Let's look at some of the other accessories because some of these I don't remember seeing the last time I looked at your gear. Yeah. So, so we have the lasagna pan here, which is a little deeper than our griddle. So then we have the, the Dutch <laughs> ovens right there. Oh, look at that, uh, they fit right together. Yep, and then so the, those lids also double as a griddle. So you could, yeah, so you could throw it on here and you have a little griddle to cook whatever your fantastic, eggs Fantastic, fantastic. Well, I'm a big Dutch oven pe person myself, and a lot of our Old Man Overland uh, members do a lot of kind of fancy cooking and yep. stuff like that, but lugging that stuff around. And then right. you've got to bring the table to go along yeah. with it and everything else. Yeah. This looks like a really interesting did, solution. Did you pick one of those up? There, I mean, You're testing my strength uh, yes, here, yeah. honey. I don't know. Everything's you know what? Like I can do this. I can almost da -da, look at that. Right. Could I do that with a Dutch yeah. oven? Probably not. So here, let me show you another thing. So when, when you can take and combine these guys here, but so storage is always the thing and each one will go i mean all the way through they'll stack inside of each other but pick those two up i mean the volume that those two would give you versus cast iron yeah, the space saving right give us a little sense of price point again i know they're they're not inexpensive but i'm a big fan right. and i always say buy once cry once that's, you know that's buy it. the right stuff yeah you'll never ask it again give us a sense of that yeah so our 22 inch um which again is our kind of our flag flagship biggest seller. They're at 510. The griddle that goes along with that, they're $185 if I remember correctly. Um, but they're again, just they're, the stuff is made to last. And you won't need to buy another. This will be right. the griddle you'll pass on to your grandson. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And the stove. Good enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, congratulations. You got a Hi. great product. It's another example of kind of quality workmanship, locally built, locally owned. And again, if you buy quality, you're not going to regret it. So uh, to check out Cook Partner and Partner Steel, what's your website? Just um, partnersteel.com. Partner and then just go into the, the shop and it'll take you into the stoves because we have a whole nother division that we, we do custom uh, steel products, a lot of exotics. Um, a whole and a whole nother thing. Great, and great. then yeah, so Good. you're gonna find Partner Steel at, at your high end outfitters as well as you can contact directly. They have bags that cover some of the things as well. Griddles, it's been an experience cooking on your stuff. And now yeah. that I've met the man, yeah, I'm looking forward to working with you again. All right, Pete. Thanks. Take care. Good to see you. You bet. So I am at I don't know whether I'm in New Zealand or whether I'm in Arizona, somewhere between because I've got James over here. James, how are you? I'm good. I'm oh, good. Here's got the accent. Joey, how are you? I'm great. Okay, so we have two different accents. So, so we're bridging the gap here. Ubco is a bike. Uh, I have owned one of these for the last five years. I just got a brand new one, which is so exciting. And I've never really met anybody from the factory before. So this is gonna be an exciting time to learn about the Ubco bike, uh, why it's so fantastic. And I even came to the show sporting my Ubco shirt that I got. I had to Pull it out and say, does this still fit? I had to lose a little weight just to have this in here. <laughs> anyway, I'd love to find out more about the history and things like that. James, why don't you tell us a little bit about the founders and where the bike came from? Yep. Then let's review the bike real quick as well. Sounds good. Cool. So, uh, yeah, the bike comes from New Zealand originally. It was designed uh, to be a farm bike and conservation bike uh, based kind of off that CT90 kind of, kind of vibe. Uh, so, yeah, hard wearing, built for farming, built to be versatile. And from that, it's grown into all these other applications. So it actually found its way in the field days, which is an event un sort of similar to this, Southern Field Days in, uh, in New Zealand, uh, and then grew into all these different applications. So now people are using them in Europe, uh, in the States, Australia, and New Zealand, use them to commute, use them to hunt, uh, deliver pizzas, tourism, uh, conservation, you name it. It's, yeah. fa it's fantastic. This is all electric. It's quiet. I use mine for bird watching. Yeah. I put my camera on the front here. I sneak up on these little suckers. They don't even know I'm coming. Joey, tell us a little more about the bike itself, what it has. You can hold on to that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and let's walk through the components. Of sure. So what we have in front of us right now, this is the special edition. And this is built on the back of our, our standard, standard model 2x2. Two two. So what makes the bike a 2x2? Two two? All-wheel drive. So we have hub motors front and back, 1,000 watts of output 
the bike itself is DPI waterproof. So the teleports, everything, you run this through a creek. As Jane was saying, it's meant to work hard at a lot of different applications. And over time, uh, with the different generations we've rolled out, we've been able to work on the battery tech, get more range. So you have 75 miles of range on a charge. Um, you have three different power modes, but it's delivering power to both wheels at all times. Um, and so with that, not only do you have dual power and a long range, you have a ton of capabilities from a utilitarian standpoint. There's 19 different racking points, and so it's kind of a Swiss Army knife. You can build anything you really want onto it. You can carry things. We make about a dozen accessories, uh, but there's a just endless amounts on the third party. And so we're constantly learning from our customers, whether they're farmers, whether they're hunters, somebody that's just run into the store for milk or or whatever it may be of how they use it, what yeah. they can strap onto it. And and just, it makes for a great storytelling piece. James, let's go over to this black bike yeah. over here. Cause this is more on, in line with the one I have. And I have these front and rear areas in here. And you know, you can fit two uh, cases of soda back here very easily. A case of beer, I understand from reading on the web, does, you know, you have to turn it a little long ways, but yeah. I think it would fit. But these platforms really are incredible. I also have their saddlebags that come with this. Um, I strap my camera tripod up here, or my telescope here, and I go birding back in the, in the woods with this. You can hitch it in a million different points. They also have, how do we transport this thing, by the way, guys? Uh, we've got a few different transport modes. So we've got single ones that you can lift the bike onto. You can take the battery out. So the battery lifts out and then drops a whole bunch of weight out of the bike. It only weighs 150 pounds. And then I think it's about 115 once you take the battery out. So easy to get around. Uh, we've got ones that go straight into your tow hitch. So you can put two bikes on. So back of your RV or if you're overlanding back of the Sprinter van or something like that. Um, so yeah, you can lift those out and transport them around. I at home throw them on the back of a ute, which they call trucks over here. So yeah. Um, yeah. Real easy just to throw on the back of the truck and the tray. Good. Strap it down. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, this one here is actually quite a good demo unit. We can show you how easy it is to yeah, ride let's do it. two-wheel drive. So, sure. uh, basically, from off, all you do is you hit the red button. It's got security features that just turned off for this bike. I think I even have a wireless fob that came with this. Yeah, right? you've got a fob, but you can detach the fob as well, so the fob's not on this one. Uh, so it's in neutral right now, so safe to hop on the bike. Uh, it's not gonna do anything. Once your kick stands up, all you do is just tap the button and you twist the throttle. No clutch or gears or anything. Both wheels start driving. So there's an engine in the front and an engine in the back. Exactly right. So the engines are sitting in the wheels. Uh, so you've got a push-pull kind of thing going on. Uh, all the weight is really, really low which makes it really easy to ride, makes it super accessible. Uh, yeah, so just really accessible, easy bike to ride. Brakes are both up on the bars here, so you've got front and rear, no foot brake. Um, step through, so easy to jump on. And you know, I had these, uh, I added these little guards up here because as you're blowing yeah. through the brush, you know, you think, wow, this is pretty easy, you don't hear anything. And then you come across the, you know, a bush over here, and it's going to hit here. So you, you do even sell brush guards around we here, do. right? We do. So we got a whole bunch of demos going on out that way. So there's a whole bunch of our range of bikes, and some of them have our lever guards attached there that exactly do that sort of. Or if yeah. the bike falls over, protects everything. Yeah. The interesting thing is, I, I have a lot of people that say to me, "Oh, that's just an e-bike." I say, "Okay." jump on it and i've had right. motorcycle guys going yeah man i ride yeah. a bike all the time they get yeah. on this when that front wheel grabs in they shake like yeah, that they're like the what ball. the heck is going yeah. on here and i have had this thing in the mud Absolutely. you know 15 20 degree angle no problem yeah. it's a great kind of combination of of being accessible to people that don't necessarily ride uh and are a little bit hesitant because of the low center of gravity the step through the adjustable power and the fact that, you know, it's it's just twist and go. And then there's still enough thrill from the dual wheel drive and the power of the output and the torque that you can get that is adjustable if you want to mellow it out to like get out and run through the dirt and have a ton of fun. So it's fun to have that ability there. And also since it's governed at that 30 mile an hour range, you don't need a motorcycle endorsement to ride it. And so it opens it up to a lot more people. It, it's, it's safer, but it's also a ton of fun to extend your adventure, get further out or just run into town for you know bottle of wine six packs and water 
milk, you get whatever you need. You know, guys, uh, that's, a, that's a very good point because a lot of us here, we're, there's a lot of rooftop tents. So people are building their rig, putting a rooftop tent in, they get where they want to go, they open it up, they swing out their shadow on it, they put out their chairs, they go, oh, crap, I need to go to town. Right. But they brought a bicycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This is not a bicycle. Now, bicycles are great, but mm -hmm. having this on the back, literally, you, you brought another vehicle that can take you wherever you need to go. And it's well lit at night, right? It's got safety lighting yeah. and everything else Absolutely. on Absolutely. Yeah. Very, very good LED, adjustable horn, all the turn signals you need to make a DOT safe and effective. And so it, it, it kind of comes equipped with everything you need. Uh, and then it's also smart proprietary tech within it so you can understand if something does go wrong it's an easy fix an air code goes off you open your phone you understand okay i need to reconnect this piece or it's time for service really but really cool they're self-sustaining in a lot of ways so for our friends at old man overland we've been looking for these kind of things you know a lot of low tech but high high fun let's put it that way yeah. so if you're interested in, in an uco bike check us out at old man overland we'll be happy to connect you with their local dealers uh, I have one. You'll see me on the road with it, dragging behind my uh, Old Man Overland Power Wagon. And uh, we'll see you on the road with this. If you see it, stop me. I'll give you a ride. Guys, thanks so much Got for you your go. time. All Cheers. right. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks so Joey, much. Joey, thanks so much. Cheers. So one of the things car campers are always looking at is how do I sleep out of the back of the car? But what if I want to get out and sleep on the ground? Well, you know, you need something to protect yourself in that. There's a lot of different things that you'll see to do that that are less than a tent, but more than a bedroll. We've got Tim from Kakadu, proudly Australian. Tim, how are you? I'm Pete. Pete, I'm great. Good to Fantastic see you. Fantastic to meet you. Yeah, you got some great looking gear back here. Why don't we describe it to our audience and tell us what we have? Yeah, I'd love to. So we're actually launching Kakadu brand here in the US this weekend at Overland Expo. We've got a, a number of new products that we're, we're bringing to market that I think are quite unique, right? And so we have our stretcher tent, which I think you folks would probably know more as a, a cot tent. Yes. Um, there are some really good benefits, first and foremost, about getting up off the ground when, you, when you're camping, right? So not only are you up off the ground increasing your airflow, so you're reducing the likelihood of condensation uh -huh. inside your unit, but you're also uh, keeping yourself a lot warmer, so you're not going to be cold on the ground. You're going to lose a lot of heat when you're, when you're straight on the ground there. So um, the, the stretcher tent here, We've been doing this in Australia for a long time, um, and the sort of guy who's going to be buying this is the person that doesn't necessarily want to be up in the rooftop tent, but they want something that's going to be really quick, really practical, easy to get into, easy to set up, and, and probably importantly, easy to pull down as well. Yeah. And snakes are probably not going to climb up these little poles and get in there too easily, so right? So that's, that's part of the reason, right? So where, where we camp, that snakes and spiders, and there's a lot of things that can kill you. So, you know, it's really important to be away from that, particularly in certain areas. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll take you guys through some of the features. So um, what you have here is a quick fold stretch car or cot tent here. So it's a, a full steel frame with the integrated telescopic poles in the bed end. So you simply fold your stretcher out, erect your poles in the end. You're running a 50 by 50 mesh inner. So it's a full mesh inner. You can use it on its own without the rain fly. So if you're in a, a hotter or a, uh, a more humid environment, you can do that. Um, we call it midgy proof, so little sand flies won't get through that mesh, which is great. Um, you've also got this rain fly, so it's a 150 denier um, polyester ripstop fly. It's a 3000 mil waterhead rated fly, it's uh, fully seam sealed, so that practically translates to it's going to keep you dry, right? You're not going to get wet in this. Um, and importantly, being a full mesh inner, it's also going to breathe really well. So you're not going to get all that condensation forming inside of a nighttime. And we've also incorporated our block out technology. So if you look under the tent, it has a, a black coating on the underside of that, of that fly. And what that does is a couple of things, right? It helps to block out the sunlight by up to 90%. So it'll keep that tent really dark. So if you're wanting to sleep in or you just need some dark environment to really sleep and, and keep yourself bunkered down, it's going to do that. And it'll also regulate the heat. So it's going to keep it slightly warmer in winter and certainly cooler in summer as well, anywhere up to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, that's significant. Yeah. And then um, when it's all said and done, you pack it down, straight back in the carry bag. It's a nice portable unit. You can throw it on the, in the back of the truck. You can throw it on the roof, get away and use it. But it's a perfect option for a quick strike mission. Great. Now, uh, the other thing I want to take a look at is if you do want to get down on the ground and maybe bring a friend, uh, there's something I know we, we would call it a you know, bedroll with a yeah. roof or something. Yep. You call it a swag. We call so it a swag, yeah. Let's go over and take a look at the swag. Love to show you. So the swag is, it's pretty stock standard on how we camp in Australia and have been for, for literally forever. So the main feature on a swag is, yes, it's on the, it's on the ground. 
Um, you can get this particular design up off the ground on a compatible stretcher. Um, but what you'll find with the swag, if we get down low in here, is you'll see that it, it includes the mattress. So we've got a two and a half inch high density foam mattress with a flannel cover in here. That stays in the swag all the time, ah, even so when packed away. So you away. close it up and roll right in there. Spot on. Yeah. What about now? What about your sleeping bag? Yeah. So you you throw your own sleeping bag in there, uh -huh. and you absolutely keep that in as well. So everything rolls up. It's yep. one and done. One and done. Maybe wash it every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on how finicky you are. Yeah. So <laughs> mine's yet to see a wash. There we go. Well, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> um, so we're running a 420D um, GSM poly cotton canvas here, full ripstop. You'll see plenty of mesh ventilation throughout the, the swag as well. Really important because this canvas does tend to sweat a little bit if you don't have the right amount of uh, ventilation. So we've gone over and above here. So we've got four D-door entry points, each full uh, full mesh ventilation with the, with the pull-down uh, canopy. We've got a bed end and a head end uh, mesh port as well, which you can actually gus it out on the window to and play around with how you want to ventilate. So. Now, a lot okay. of times you'll end up putting your shoes or something like that underneath there to keep them dry. That's right, yeah. You've got a, got a nice place to stash and, and store. Um, we've also got some internal integrated LED lighting, which will operate off a USB sort of power bank, um, which is really handy, and a nice multi-panel gear organizer in, inside. So, Yeah, that's great. And I'll tell you what, there's enough olive drab coloring here that we yeah. finally get to see a little fashion. It's like fashion forward, <laughs> you know? Yeah, thank uh, but you. it's great. I think it's a it's a fantastic product. The Australians are known for bringing this kind of outback, outdoor concept to us. We appreciate that. But this this definitely looks like a step above. So congratulations yeah, on bringing Pete. it here. Really appreciate it. We're excited. Yeah. So if people want to find out more about Kakadu, how do they do that? Yeah, just jump online. You'll find us at kakaduusa.com. Wonderful. And uh, websites up there. We've got um, some lot of lot of new products that we're launching and. Uh, We've got a fair bit in the pipeline as well. So in Australia, we've, we've got 800 odd products sitting behind us. We're targeting very focused in the overland market here and we'll just keep trip feeding through some nice innovation. Good, wonderful. If we can help you, let us know. Love we'll to. see you out on the trail. Pete, great to meet you. Take care. Thanks very much. You know, as you walk around the show, you meet people that you've met in previous shows. Uh, Josh from Lava Box, if you follow our channel, you know we did a show with him last year. But uh, let's go over and check and see how he's doing these days. So for those of you that follow us when we do these Overland Expos, you met our friend Josh from Lava Box yes. last year. Yes, sir. That was before Shark Tank, before all the other things oh, he's man. got going on. <laughs> yes, sir. You've been pretty busy, brother. Good been to see really you. busy. Good to see you guys. I'm so glad to have you back. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's been an amazing year. Uh, Sold a lot of lava boxes. <laughs> That's great. And this this one over here is still the main the main seller, it is right? Still the best seller. Uh, in fact, the one that we make, the, you know, that's not powder coated, our naked, uh -huh. is the number one seller. People love to see a patina, and actually, it kind of is a mark of how many days you're out in the woods. Yeah, and, mine's naked, man. That's the only way to go. The only way naked is the only way to go. It's right? cool, and we and we are the only ones who sell the mill still naked. So I think it's yeah. it's special. Well, sometimes they say. Uh, Duplication is a serious form of flattery. I will take it that way. That's okay. You're the man. You made it happen. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I see you still got the big box, which is still, you know, cruising it, you know, eight to ten feet high when you're doing it. And you, I heard you mention to somebody about this base that's underneath there. That the base actually, yes. aside from being a grill, also does something that makes it legal in certain parts of the. Very important. So that, that's a great. You picked up something really important. The has to be five inches off the ground in national parks. And so if you don't oh. do that. They will ding you for it, especially if you're not in an established camp, camp or a fire pit. Yeah, so, so that, be really careful about that. And that is that that is an accessory, but it comes with the kit now, right? It does. It does. Yep. And this is also a new thing. You did not it have is, this before. It is. These fancy bags. This is our bug out bag. This actually, this bag is fantastic, and everyone tells me now that it's it's the the thing you must have. So because now you have your over under here, your lava box, your regulator, a bottle of whiskey. I mean, it's pretty terrific, and it just throw it in your rig. So and when go. you show up, when you show up at the party like this, that's the one. I mean, that's the one. <laughs> you just gotta just move over, make me a drink. I'll make the rest. That's right. That's, that's fantastic. Right. Well, listen, man, it was great to meet you last year, and I came by here. I saw this throng of people, and I thought, what's going on? Then I saw the flame, and I knew it was you. Thank you. So, Josh, what's the website they would go to if they want to buy yep, something? They're gonna run over to fireanytime.com. Of course, you can also just Google Loudbox Portable Campfire. 
And uh, when you pop up on the site, make sure to see if there's any codes going on because we always have specials. Fantastic. And you're also raising money for some great charities. That's right. We started a nonprofit with Orvis and a few other members. Uh, our project is called Project Little Bird, but we're working with uh, one specific nonprofit called Protect Our Rivers. It's protectourrivers.org. Fantastic. A dollar for every single sale we make goes to them, plus we sponsor all their events. So it's a, it's a big deal. We picked up last year thousands and thousands and thousands of tons of garbage. I mean, like all over the country. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. You. So you're doing you're doing good and you're doing well at the same time. So we how try. About that? You know we try. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Friday, man. Thanks. Yeah, thank thanks you. for doing things. I saw this video online, Born Outdoor, and the founder of the company, Stuart, did an excellent job of explaining it on the video. So I passed the quiz when I walked in here. I knew where he all did. the things were. But for our audience and the, and the folks at Old Man Overland, let's walk through the product, what makes it different, and some of the special features. Absolutely. So our approach to, to this, if you think about when you're out camping, you're overlanding, there's two things you do most of. You drive and you sleep. So those are the two big things you're always working on. So our approach to sleeping is really a minimalist. Just be able to sleep anywhere, anytime. So what we've created was, and we're kind of really reinvented the old bedroll. So we've taken a, um, a bed, this is our bedroll here, is what you're looking at here, is what it looks like when it's completely rolled out. Weighs uh -huh. in about 15 pounds. Inside here, what you have is the, a mattress, the quilt, and a sheet, all, all rolled up in here. Weighs about, like I said, about 15 pounds. So this is the bedroll system itself right here. Um, <clears throat> what we've done is we have a thermarest pad here. So it's a, it's a four inch thermarest pad. These pads, uh, Mondo King, the X-Peds will fit in here as well. It has an R7 rating, so they're super warm. And you, you, so you have that, then we have a sheet system on top. We've got a, a fitted sheet and a top sheet. And then we have a series of quotes you can add. So the, this is designed to be able to sleep either in the Baja in, in Mexico or El Camp in Colorado. One system that you can use everywhere. Some of the materials we've chosen on these pads, these pads are they're super nice and super quality, but it's been surrounded by this heavy material here. Is a 610D ripstop PVC coated material that you can lay directly on the ground. Now this looks like where you might also put some shoes or something Absolutely. else to keep them out of the out of the wet. So weather. it's, it's kind of like a taco uh, piece here. When you roll it up from the base, and you roll it up here, it lands here. But this is this is designed to to step onto, put your boots onto before you get into your bed. Fantastic. And it looks like and the sheets are custom made to fit this this yep. item. It's a 30 inch. Th the sheets we have a bottom fitted sheet, which is really straightforward, and then a top sheet fitted sheet. At the top here, you've got a couple of features. You've got a little utility pocket, a place for your cell phone, and down here, a place for your keys. And you even have keys in here. Does it come with I the do. car that goes with it this? It does not. Ah, oh, you know, so, I thought there might. Yeah, and there's actually a little hook there. Yeah. I have this terrible tendency of, I need a hook. The, thing the pocket about the hook is one is, thing, the hook is better. The thing, the great thing about the hook is once you've packed up all your vehicle and you can't find your keys, you at least know where they are. Yeah, that's true. So, so, so I know this will work if I sleep yep. outside. Uh, how will it be in a tent, rooftop tent or something like that? Absolutely fine. So the, the biggest, when we, when we talk about the size of it or where you're sleeping, there's two variables. One is how are you actually transporting it? So if you're, like on, if you're doing a moto, it's just too big for a moto because you physically don't have that size. Um, and the next question is where are you sleeping? So if you've got a tent, rooftop tent, you know, when it comes to sleeping, bigger is better. Yeah. Nobody sleeps on a 25 or 30 inch pad at home. We're on queen size, king size beds. So the more space you have, the better it is, the yeah. more comfortable it is. So the, the idea there is the determination on how the size of it is really how you're laying. So we have people sleep in the back of their trucks, uh, rooftop tents, on the ground, on cots, in tents, wherever, just kind of wherever you end up. And you know, sleep. it's interesting because traditionally people think you're going camping, you need a sleeping bag. No. And a sleeping bag, yeah, you know, the concept's pretty good, but when you're in the middle of the night and your feet are sweating, but yet if you could bring a bed outdoors, yes. wouldn't that make a difference? And that's what you've got here. That's absolutely what we've done. And the idea with it, is with these with the a nice quality pad with an R7 rating, you're not losing any heat through there. So you don't have to have a sleeping bag because the bottom of that's not doing anything for you. So you got plenty of insulation layer here. You have a nice sheet here that you can actually take off and wash and clean up. And it's just adding those layers on top of you. If you get too hot, this this whole thing unzips. You can shed this off, take that off, shed this off, bring it back on, and you know so you kind of adjust your temperatures throughout the day. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what everything costs here. We sell it all a cart on the website. Um, it's also at some other major retail online stores. Um, the outer shell is roughly $400. Um, this is roughly $100, $130, and the sheets are around $50. We also have bundle pack 
bundle pricing to be able to kind of bring it all together and save you a little bit of money. Good, good. And so they, uh, what is the website they go out to to find out more about it? You can go to bornoutdoor.com, B-O-R-N, outdoor.com. And my last name is actually Born. It is? It is. Well, I'm glad you were born. <laughs> exactly. Stuart, yeah. nice, nice product. We're looking Appreciate forward to, and we're going to spend some time in our studio looking at this and other types of ground systems to see kind of how they all fare. So I'm looking forward to getting to know more about it, but thank you for joining and hey, thanks for bringing another industry into Absolutely. this market. We appreciate really appreciate it. it. Thanks. So a lot of fun toys here at Overland. And the thing that's the least fun is when you get stuck somewhere. Like that guy. You do not want to be that guy, the dead man who's stuck out in the wilderness with no way to, to extract himself. So enter Dead Man Off-Road and Sam, one of the founders and uh, one of the fathers of 11 children of the four founders, I guess. <laughs> three of us, yeah, there's, there's, uh, three of us, absolutely. So I've seen this brand a lot, around a lot. Uh, I, I've seen your stuff on YouTube and otherwise, but I wanna make sure that we just kind of explain what's in it and why did you guys create uh, Dead Man Off-Road? Sure. What was the reason? So um, the Bryant, the creator of the product, is an aerospace engineer by trade and he's a jeeper and was going out to the deserts outside of San Diego where we're from and realized that there's not a whole lot to anchor to out there, right? So that's kind of pucker time, right? You're talking about burying spare tires, things like that. Dead man anchoring is that practice of digging a deep hole, burying a spare tire, a high lift jack, what have you. Bryant's a smart guy as an aerospace engineer. He's wheel started turning in his head and he looked at some of the materials available and designed something that can be buried and then turned into an anchor point. So if you've got deep sand, deep snow, deep mud, dig a hole about 18 inches deep. Not a fun thing to do, but if you're out there and you're stuck and you've got nobody else to rely on, you don't want to be a dead man. So grab whatever it takes, dig that hole. The product has to lay flat in that hole and you're backfilling it. It acts like a fish hook. As you pull on it, you get resistance from the leading edge of that wall, the front wall of the hole. That'll create enough resistance to get you up out of whatever you're in. We've Good. measured up to 8,000 pounds of resistance. So Bryant has access to tools like a load cell, which is something that measures the pull in line with the winch. We were up at Pismo Dunes up in Central California coast, and that's where we got the 8,000 pound reading. Ultimately, it's the conditions that will determine, right? So snow can get very feathery light in the Midwest, out west in you know, Sierras, it's very dense and moist. So that, we get better results from certain conditions versus others, right? So sand also can get very powdery and that can be very tough. So if you can dig a hole that can hold its shape, uh -huh. it's not filling in as you're shoveling it out, you're good to go. Sounds at that good. Well, that tool is one of a number that you've got here and I see, your, you know, the yellow theme is carrying yep. through here. Let's go through some of the other products that are in your kit and then I want to look at the full kit itself. Okay, absolutely. So um, one of the other products we have here is a kinetic rope, which is good for somebody without a winch, right? So if you're new to the space, you're doing vehicle to vehicle recovery. This isn't self recovery at that point. You're helping somebody out of a tough situation. They're in mud, snow, sand, what have you. Four tires on the ground. I'm not a fan of doing a kinetic recovery when somebody's high centered. It's not probably the tool for that, obviously on a case by case basis, but this is very popular right now because it's probably one of the most common forms of recovery that you'll encounter in your daily life. Just driving to work, you'll see somebody in the ditch. Oftentimes a kinetic rope is the tool for that. So soft shackle on each vehicle. This uh -huh. is, go ahead and hold that now one. Now this, I thought these were metal, super heavy, and had to be screwed together. Those are the bow shackles of yesterday. Those are um, yesterday's shackle? The only, there are use cases for those. I can't say that those are a thing of the past at all. Uh -huh. There are definitely use cases for bow shackles, but soft shackles are very good for most of the use cases that bow shackles are good for and better because they're safer. If a bow shackle fails, it becomes a projectile. We're talking windshields, we're talking humans that could yeah, get yeah. very seriously hurt. This guy fails, it might get dirty, you might get some rope burn. And it's got a 30,000 pound? MBS, minimum braking strength. Wow, fantastic. The, the like other big, one in your other hand looks is Looks like a big Chinese handcuff. <laughs> kind of. This one's actually rated at 43,000 pounds. Oh my so God. this one's even tougher and it's got some protective sheathing. So if you have a really sharp edge on your recovery point, it can give you additional peace of mind. Got it. So those we pair into a kit. So we take the kinetic rope, the soft shackle, and we put it into the body bag. We went all in on the marketing. Put it into the body bag and you put the kit someplace ideally easy to get to, like a first aid kit, like a fire extinguisher. You don't want to have to empty the contents of the back seat of your truck on the trail to get to recovery gear. So keep it easily accessible. Now what's this big thing hanging off? This here? is the Dead Man Earth Anchor. That's the thing that you Dead bury Man in the hole. Dead Man Earth Anchor. That's it. So you bury that in a hole. 
about 18 inches deep, you backfill it, you can use it as a recovery point, but it's not a one trick pony and we, we are really working hard to dispel that. It's not just that ground anchor. Right. You can wrap that around a tree or wrap it around a rock as well. And in those cases, it's actually rated at 60,000 pounds. Wow. So. In addition to that, you can use it even as a winch line extension. So you can put one end on one vehicle and pull your buddy with the other end on the other vehicle. It's only 15 feet across, but in that use case, it's rated at 33,000 pounds. Wow, fantastic. Lifetime guarantee on this. You make it fail, that's a cheap test that I didn't have to pay some laboratory to do and charge me thousands of dollars. I'm gonna replace the product and ask you how you made it fail. That helps us learn, that helps us redesign it fantastic. and improve it. So these are one of those tools, kind of like insurance, but this is the kind of insurance you want to have. Yeah, if you get absolutely. yourself in, that that can be a lot of fun. If you can't get yourself out, you don't want to be a dead man. So absolutely, you gotta you gotta have the tools to get home. At the I, end I of don't the day, know how right? much more clever we can be with the name. I think we've kind of exhausted that. Anyway, how do we find out more about Dead Man Off Road? So, how do we get it? So. Deadmanoffroad.com is the website. Uh, if anybody's on social media, we're on Facebook or Instagram at deadman underscore offroad. I manage those accounts, so you'd be reaching out to me directly if you were to do it that so way. Sam, one of the dead men. All right. And there's only three of us, Sam, Bryant, and Daniel. And we'd love to just have conversations about recovery. We like to geek out on that. We had a t-shirt years ago that said recovery nerd because we just love to talk about it because we're always trying to learn. Good. Fantastic. So the entire product line I didn't mention and I feel like should be mentioned, the entire product line is American made. Wonderful. Hopefully that's important to you guys. It right? is I know it is to us. Absolutely. Amen. Sam, I appreciate it, man. Sure. Thank you for the demonstration. And folks, check these guys out on the web. And uh, also you'll see more from them on Old Man Overland. So you spend a ton of money on your special truck. You get it home and you realize, where do I put this? Or how do I secure that? And you have to go to the marketplace and find those aftermarket manufacturers that make the tools, make the puzzle pieces that essentially fit into the truck that you have. And Expedition Essentials is one of those. We're with Tim from Expedition Essentials today. How you doing, my friend? Nice to meet you. Good. So I have admired your stuff forever. And I have a power wagon with an Allen cabin on the back and goose gear inside and everything I want. And my challenge is where the heck do I put my stove? And I have also right. my partner stove. They're a big Fan, we're a big fan yeah. of theirs. They're a part of Old Man Overland as well. Definitely. You guys have invented something for the back there yes. that really solves that problem. Yes. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so what we have, and I'll open the door here. Yeah, go ahead. Is our exo table, which is, in a sense, a camp kitchen in a box. So it, it, it elevates, it takes tailgate ta table to the next level. So this is so this sits in here full time? It does. It lives in there full time. So it. Yeah, it's a space saver and a space creator at the same time. Interesting. Okay, well, let's unfold it. I can, I can it. open it up and show you. Yeah. Oh, there's our cook partner stove. There's the stove. Whoa, I'm in the way. This guy slides over here. And then your upper shelf. And then your cutting board right there. Wow. Okay, so that just transformed itself from yeah. a mystery box to a kitchen. Exactly. Now this, uh, obviously this partner stove is, is aluminum, but there's still yes. some weight here. I put a big spaghetti pot of water on here. Is this gonna hold? Yes, so these, these slides are AccuRide slides and these are meant to be mounted flat and still rated for 150 pounds. Flat they look familiar. Like I think my goose gear has something similar yes. inside. Yep. yep, these are the best slides. So we really wanted a, the best slides in this box. And Good. They do the job nicely. Yes. Wonderful. So, and now we've got the cutting board inside here. Yes. And what do we use this for? This is an upper table or shelf, you know, so if you're cooking, prepping your meal down here, you set your condiments up here, your drink, and yeah. See, you're I knew cooking you're bring a drink somewhere. Yeah. The drink has got to go somewhere. Exactly. This is that's a perfect right. water, spot for you know. Water. Yeah, that's what Absolutely. we're talking about. Absolutely. Water. Yeah. Club soda. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever Hydrate. Else. Good. And so I, and if I have my partner stove with its regular windscreen and other stuff that can go on here as well or do you need to remove it so this is designed to work without the windscreen um, you know partner still does make a little folding windscreen if you really had to have it but the way this is designed if you don't mind holding this for me sure. I'll show you on really windy days you can still use it as its own windscreen simply by sliding this guy right oh look at that look at that still have a covered area that's protected from the wind Fantastic. So if it's really that bad, yeah, you can still do the same thing. That's great. And then it all buttons up in one place. Yep. So there's got to be a few other nits and gadgets around here that uh, that you're responsible for. What other things do we have yeah, around so, the back of the truck? Um, I mean, aside from this customer door, but we don't want to talk about this custom, 
This is one of our, our standard products here, the propane bottle mount, which holds oh, yeah. a 10 or five pound bottles. That's one of our really That's popular it. products. Yeah, actually, you know, I mean, I've seen a lot of those yep. aluminum ones that kind of wrap around with the yep. band. Yep. And they they look like they do the trick, but this right. seems more secure to me. Yes, yes. It's got a compression lock on there. uses, you know, like a similar key to our Max Trax mount. And, uh, oh, yeah, so it's it adds just, a different level of security. It does, yeah. Does it also help with the rattling? Oh, yes. I mean, this thing is... Not going anywhere. It's solid. Not going anywhere. Fantastic. So, well, wonderful. I wanted to get a sense of what this was. I wasn't, yeah. you know, I was thinking if I take it out of the box, is it going to be something I'm going to use now? I'm, I'm positive this yeah. is going to help me. And when I close the door and I'm using an Alicab, it does clear the goose gear inside. Is that right? Yes. It, we we have adapter plates for the for the Alicab and, and the Canopy Camper, you know, to place it either on the left or the right to clear the goose gear drawers. Perfect. Well, I'm looking forward to checking that out. Now, if people want to know more about Expedition Essentials, how do they reach you? You know, our website, expeditionessentials.com or Instagram. That's really the best way to get a hold of us. Good, good. Well, yeah, I'm going to send you some pictures and some yeah. Instagram links. And uh, once I get it up and running, I will uh, send you what it looks like. I look forward to seeing it. You bet. Thanks for all the good work you're doing. Thank you. So when you walk the show, you see a lot of people that are looking for ways to do kind of a DIY build. Start out with car camping, maybe add a mattress in the back. Then they go home and they watch some YouTube channels, they throw together some plywood and they think they've got it happening. That's, this is what really is interesting for bringing people into our market, but I've met Nathan, who's the founder of car to camp who's made it a lot easier. So save yourself the screws and nails. Let's find out what Nathan's got for us. Nathan, tell us a little bit about car to camp and what you've invented here. Sure, thanks. Yeah, we took the best ideas of all the DIYs that have ever been built and baked it down into one awesome design. So this is our sleeping platform that we make for over a thousand different vehicles, all the Subarus, the Jeeps, the Toyotas, and more. Uh, it's, it's really about two things. So you get the storage space underneath and a flat space to sleep on top. So it's adjustable, you can adjust its length to customize it based on where you want your front seats to be when you're driving. You get 11 and a half cubic feet of storage space underneath. Uh, it's really been born out of our own pain points when car camping and traveling, and that's what influenced this design. Yeah, and it looks like it's, it's all made out of a, uh, a pressure treated material, or what do we have here? Yep, it's made out of a birch, which is the best balance between strength and weight. Uh huh. And then uh, you've obviously just got simple containers. Here. Now, this is part of the build. I don't want to be showing your undergarments <laughs> here. So. so I'm living in this for the next four months while I hit shows. This is my closet. Oh, that's really but good. And uh, complete with Cardi Camp t-shirts. Complete Imagine with Cardi Camp t-shirts. Yeah, yeah so what we did was we designed it so that you could use storage bins in it if you wanted, and they act like drawers. But if you don't want the storage bin, you can just take it out. It saves, it saves on cost. It saves on weight. Um, it's designed to be everything you need and nothing you don't. Okay, tell me what's going on in the front there with the hinged area. Yeah, those are super cool. I can show you around the front here, actually. This hinged wing is super important. So it curves outwards at the front of your vehicle where it gets wider to give you increased shoulder room when sleeping. You can roll over easier. It makes getting in and out of the vehicle easier and it hinges up so you can access all your storage space underneath. Very cool, and the same thing happens on the other side. Yes, they're symmetrical. This is our full-size unit, but we also sell a single-person unit, which is this design, but in a 60 split, so you can utilize one of your rear seats. And I'm noticing these, these boards in the center. Is this how you adjust the, the, the length or the height? Yep, that's exactly right. This is how you adjust the length of the platform. Um, you can space these slats in different areas. Reminds me of Thanksgiving dinner at my grandmother's house. <laughs> You know, no one said that, but I know exactly what you're talking about. My grandmother had the same table. Yeah. So it really does look like, you know, just plug and play here. So it comes knocked down and it's easy to put together. How yeah. long does it take to put the project together? Yeah, that's right. So it comes disassembled and then you can assemble it without any tools required in just 10 minutes at home. Oh it all God. pops together uh, like this, grooves and notches. And then there's Velcro and there's a few bolts that you tighten, but no tools required on your I wrench. feel like I've met the Steven Jobs of car camping here. I don't there know. There is man. a lot of thought put into this design. I mean, we were engineering students at Penn State when we started this. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. So, and over here, I do see we got a list of some of the cars that you do fit in. You said you have over a thousand? Over that you'll a be thousand able different vehicles. Those are the most popular ones. Uh, most of our platforms go to Subaru owners or Toyota owners, but we do a whole lot of them. Fantastic. So let's talk about price. I mean, again, I know I'm not looking at a at a rooftop tent made out of aluminum, you know, imported from some uh, down under country, 
But tell me what we got here in terms of cost. Right, so we make these all in Pennsylvania, all in Reading, Pennsylvania. And this full-size platform, as you see here, goes for $895 online. And our single-person unit goes for $795 online. And they all ship for free anywhere in the 48 states. Fantastic. So, I mean, honestly, by the time you get this done and you thought, I'm going to build my own, the frustration, the splinters, the, the wrong color that you chose to paint it when you decided, oh, I think I'll just paint this. This is beautiful, and it yeah. looks really great. And yeah, thank you. Does it fit with a lot of the uh, existing mattress, aftermarket mattresses and things that I've seen here? Yep. What do you usually find people putting inside? On this full-size platform, we recommend a full-size memory foam mattress topper. Uh, we sell them on our website as well. They're a little bit oversized for most vehicles, but they're so soft that they contour to the curvature of the vehicle. And then the single person unit has been designed around the popular dimensions of like Thermarest uh, pads or Big Agnes or all the big manufacturers. Fantastic. Well, Nathan, I'm super impressed, man. And uh, I really like it. I mean, I know of a couple Subaru owners that I'm gonna pass this on to, but if somebody wants to find out more, what's the website and how do they order from you? That's at car2camp.com and uh, you can place your orders on there and we'll get them shipped out of Pennsylvania to you. Fantastic. Thanks for bringing it to the show. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for talking with me. You know, you walk aisle after aisle on these shows and you see a lot of the same thing, packaged maybe a little bit differently. Every once in a while though, you come across something that you thought, oh, why didn't I think of that? Let's go check this thing out. So the major question is you're out in the middle of the woods, you need to find a place to go to the bathroom. Sometimes that's a pretty easy proposition. Sometimes if you're in a campground, not so much. If you're here at Expo, you are approximately three and a half inches from the person next to you. So what do your facilities look like? And we found this new company here, InstaPrivy, which is an incredible product, not only something for camping like something on this weekend, but to have with you in your car at all the time. I want to invite Paul, the inventor, over to explain it to us. Come on in, Paul. All right. Oh, and you've even got an InstaPrivy shirt. Nice to see you. Absolutely. Great, nice to great. see you. So I've seen a lot of toilets, as many people have. And they, if you shop around here, you can buy one for $700. That wraps oh, yeah. it up for you and package it, maybe mail it somewhere, to a five-gallon bucket from Lowe's to a shovel. Yeah. But this is really unique because it looks like something you could pick up instantly and get started. Tell us what it is. Okay, so this is the it's a privy. It's a portable toilet kit and a backpack. The backpack is padded, stowable backpack straps, molly webbing on the front. But on the inside, you, you got a, a portable toilet chair, a privacy tent, a set of five waste bags. If you run out of waste bags, we got you a shovel. Uh, you also have four ply toilet paper and hand sanitizer. So it's everything you're going to need to use this product. Well, let's unpack it and show everybody how it works. Okay, so let's start with the, the toilet chair. Uh, do you want to try that? Yeah, actually. Set so that out. So put this down. When you get here, you put a waste bag. Actually, you know, it looks like we got one over here that's got a waste bag yep. in it. So, so this weight, these waste bags come with it. Yep. It's a set of five waste bags, and the waste bag goes right across the top of the legs, uh -huh. and the lid interlocks with it. So, yep. You just <laughs> pull, pull that. Oh yeah. So you just and this. I mean, you give the waste bags, but I can use any waste bag. Well, not all of them fit as good as others. Uh -huh. Ideally, you'd use the uh, instant privy waste bag, but okay. um, others may fit. Well, now, this part, I don't think, this is not an instructional video. Most people know how to do this, but if you don't, this is how you do this. But all now, right. I, I mean, I, I think there's a crowd around here, so what are we going to do to protect me so that I don't uh, have to... Pete, we got you covered. You got me covered? Friend. Covered literally? Literally. Oh, my gosh. So this is the privacy tent. It just comes out, goes right over your head, just like that. You Amazing. 360 degrees visibility. Amazing. You got a pocket inside for your toilet paper hand sanitizer. <laughs> we even got instructions if you're bored in there, Pete. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking for a magazine. Yeah. That'd be good. I'm going to be you here for a while. You know, this is fantastic. And it looks like, you know, if you had to, you could tie this up in a tree as well, right? Yeah. I mean, people have seen people's legs walking around before. So if you yeah. wanted to take a shower or do something else or change your clothes, I guess you could use this in a number of ways. Yeah, you absolutely can. And for a shower, it works great because it doesn't go all the way to the ground where it's going to get mud splashed up on it. Uh, and so it's actually best to hang it up a little bit and then it drip dries and go, can go back That's in your fantastic. kit in about 15 minutes. Now, this was a lot larger than the backpack it came out of. So how do we fold this thing up? Well, if you don't mind, I will give you a quick class on that. Okay. All right. So. The, the best way to do it, I think, uh -huh. Go is, ahead. is just to, to hold it at four and eight. 
and then kind of hold it like this and then you're going to get alligator arms bring it up like this form a taco shape twist in like that gather all three rings goes right back magical in the bag. magical so again and then this whole thing folds up in a bag i mean i walked by the show like a lot of people did and i'm thinking what the heck is that? And I saw this person wearing this. I thought it was maybe a Mardi Gras thing or maybe they were having a happy hour. Uh, and then it popped out and there's a toilet underneath it. So so everything fits in that little bag. Yes, sir. And the, the complete kit weighs just seven pounds and it fits in every boat, every RV, every truck, overland vehicle, Jeep. It's, I think if you were tailgating, it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, you're absolutely right. That's another great application. So how much is it? So the, the retail on the It's a Privy Kit for everything included is 150 bucks. Great. And then they can buy supplies or whatever else from the website? Absolutely. Uh, go to itstheprivy.com or send me an email at paul at itstheprivy.com. We'll take care of you. That sounds fantastic. Well, I know one of these is going to end up in the back of my truck. And I know Dave, our cameraman, who's a frequent tailgater at football games, particularly baseball games. Uh, we're going to get one for him, too, for his family to use. So, Paul, great invention. Thanks Thank for you, doing sir. it. Thanks for joining Thanks. the show. Thanks. And for those that haven't stopped by here, itstheprivy.com on the Internet. Check it out. So guys, we talk a lot about gear and all the ways you want to have things out there. You want to have refrigeration, you want to have lighting, you want to have uh, the ability to charge other devices. And everybody's got a battery compartment. And the real key is what's in that battery compartment. This is Battleborn. And I didn't, I didn't know anything about Battleborn before. I know that I bought a, uh, an Airstream, which came with great batteries. And I said, oh, this is great. What else do I need? He said, well, you know, you can upgrade to Battleborn. And I said, why would I want to do that? He says, well, here's why. So needless to say, I did that, and now every battery I put in all of my devices is this one. So I walked by the booth, and I said, here's Battleborn. Can someone tell the rest of the audience what's so great about these? And I bump into this guy, who's Eric Carter, who's like Mr. Battleborn Battery. So nice to meet you, Eric. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm Eric Carter. I'm one of the technical sales and support specialists uh, that works from our Reno, Nevada headquarters. And that's where we build all these batteries. So this is our current line of lithium iron phosphate deep cycle batteries. And we've really identified that our battery is such a great option for your overlanding builds. And you know, the, the reason being is that, well, there's advantages in going to lithium that are gonna save you weight, allow you to have more usable power and help the batteries recharge much faster than those traditional acid-based batteries of old. So that, that's really the big advantages that you look at right off the bat with our Battleborn line of batteries. So, so they charge fast and then they, I, you, maybe give us a little bit of electrical jargon here. 12 volt, 100 amp hours. This one is 50 amp hours, 24 volt. Yeah, so we build both 12 and 24 volt batteries currently and we build them in a, a variety of capacities. So really the voltage is all about what you're looking to power. I, I think in most mobile power systems, we're finding 12 volt to be the, the native voltage of choice, just because a lot of our DC loads are, are 12 volt requirements. Right. So our lights, our fans, our water pumps, you know, a lot of the, the modern fridges and coolers, yeah. they're all gonna run off 12 volts. So it makes sense to have that, you know, that 12 volt native voltage no loss in your use of power Correct, and, and yeah. easy to charge. We also make a 24 volt. We're starting to see a bigger, uh, you know, request for 24 and 48 volt systems for the folks that want to install a heck of a lot of solar and have just a, a higher efficiency in harvesting from solar or harvesting from an alternator and not having to lose as much when they step up to 120 volt power. Right. So there, there's a lot of different ways we can strategize and help to build the right battery bank, you know, for your application and usage. And then typically is 50 amp hours with a solar panel attached enough for someone to manage the weekend or do you end up daisy chaining these together or you know, I, 100 I think, amps better? I, I think the battery you have your hand on, this is our flagship battery. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So so this is sort of the, the battery of choice for us. If you're, you know, a weekend warrior, if you've got, you know, power usage where you want to power the fridge, you know, charge a phone or a laptop, uh, you know, have the lights on, you know, just kind of your creature comforts, then something like this is great for a weekend outing. And you throw a maybe 200 watt solar panel to, to pair with that, and we're getting good solar. Yeah, you're, you're gonna go out and not have any battery anxiety through the whole weekend. So I have this battery in my uh, Allo cabin, right in one of my Goose Gear cabinets. It's a Red Arc system. 
and I have 200, maybe 400 watts, no, 200 watts on the roof. I have never charged this battery, ever, ever. <laughs> never I've had to never plug in once. It once. Yeah. I leave the truck outside, and there we go. So I've never charged it, which must mean it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, but this is one of those things, again, and I've said this in a few other videos, there's lots of choices out there. Buy once, cry once. This is not a cheap battery. It's not a cheap battery in terms of the way its workmanship is. It's not an inexpensive battery. But do you want to be out there in the middle of nowhere and run out of power? I don't think so. So if you think about the core systems in your rig, battery power, 12 volt power, you know, is one of those things that just not only for creature comforts, but for recharging your phone, plugging in your satellite phone, making sure your GPS works. This is an essential. So uh, how do people buy these? I see, them in, I see them in special dealerships, but what do you recommend to folks? You can come directly to us. You can call us. You can go to our website, battlebornbatteries.com. You can shoot an email. There, there's a dozen of us, myself included, that are on the phones that are available over email to answer questions, to help you design a system from bumper to bumper. And, and you can buy the batteries, you can buy the product to charge the batteries from us. You can buy solar panels from us. So come to us. If you need help with an install, we can give you some tips and tricks, give you a, a wiring schematic to kind of help show you the right way to do it. If you need somebody to take that further step and help you install the, the system, we've got a network of dealers throughout the country. We'll try to find somebody who's around the corner from you and, and make sure that you can go out have the power you need to go and, and enjoy yourself. Get out there and stay out there. That's our motto. Wonderful. Well, Eric, thanks a lot, gang. Take a look at this. It's, they're here at the show. Check them out on the website. I'm guessing battlebornbatteries.com. You got it, battlebornbatteries.com. I would have chose the same thing. You know <laughs> yeah, or give us a call. We're, we're happy to chat with you guys anytime. Wonderful. Eric, thanks so much. Pete, thanks thank for coming you. to the show. Appreciate Great it. product. So this little lantern I found when I got my Airstream Base Camp 20 in the gift shop there. And I thought, well, what, is, what the heck is this? And I turn it on. It's the perfect little lantern, charges with a USB cord, hangs on this thing. And I, I didn't know much about it. I saw bare bones. Then I walked by this booth. There's an entire bare bones lifestyle here, elevated outdoor goods. I've got Eric with me from Bare Bones, who uh, is the head of sales. Eric, I love this lantern, but I love more even what I'm seeing here. So. Tell us about Bare Bones. Where did it get started? What's it all about? Yeah, so Bare Bones kind of came from our nonprofit, which was about uh, creating sustainability for people. So we do a lot of work in uh, third world countries, disaster relief, and Bare Bones was our solution for shelter and food. But what we do is we found that instead of going out and trying to raise money, we'd much rather start a business that we can then help to support our humanitarian initiatives. And so that's kind of where the idea started now. And then we are, our family is a family business. Uh, we live up in Utah, 850 acre ranch. And so we live this lifestyle, right? We love the heritage, vintage, the stuff that your grandma passed down to you. Um, so we just kind of like, that's what inspires our product. So we go and look at the, you know, we'll go to antique shops and find something really cool that we love. And then we'll put some modern technology into it and then utilizing natural materials as much as possible, you end up with some beautiful items. Yeah, and the thing that, uh, aside from the fact that they really are styleable, the quality is amazing. So, Sarah, your head of product, told me this is like the, what does she call it, the charcuterie knife? or the? Yeah, we call it like the picnic knife or provision knife. Oh, the provision knife. Yeah, yeah. and so it's kind of a built-in all-in-one. You got your standard kind of pairing knife, and then it's got the wine opener, the bottle cap opener and it's yeah. just a really nice quality item yeah I mean everything in here it's not like you reinvent it's not like you invented this no you reinvented yep this. exactly Re reinventing it so exactly. so what's really neat about this and again you know you're gonna have your core items you gotta have you're gonna need your flashlight you're gonna need your sleeping bag but when it comes to really romancing this or yep. glamping this as some people would call it it's nice to have some of these finer touches. But what's really cool about this is it's not only beautiful, it's functional. Like this little, like this little uh, Dutch oven here. That oven right there. So, you know, whether you're gonna put some eggs in here or yep. something else. And again, it's just, it's just so well designed that I really like it. Even enamelware, you know, I mean, if you're gonna have a, a camper or something and you're gonna wanna bring out maybe some, I noticed that you have plates, you have, uh, dinnerware, all those types of things that would really round out someone's kitchen area. And then you've got functional tools as well. 
I mean, this feels like something I would have found in an antique shop, exactly. but it's brand new. Yep. And and we all of our, we all, whenever we develop a product, we do what we call the three T's. You know. Uh, we call it the tool, the texture, and the treat, right? So when we take this for example, the tool is a tool, right? An axe is an axe, plastic is an axe, plasky. That's the tool. The texture is now what makes it beautiful. You know, what makes it stand out? Whether it's putting in the hickory with the walnut stain, and, and you know all the different accents. And then the treats are the things that people, are, oh, they thought of that too, right? So like for example, we put a five eighth inch uh, steel bar through this handle which then balances it out, and then all of a sudden this little compact tool swings like a full-size axe. So it just kind of rounds it out. And we always kind of use that mentality it's really fantastic. when we do our products. Yeah, you know, there's a couple other companies that have done that as well, but they focused in on the, on the more uh, geared towards the mechanical part of things, geared more towards, you know, how do I make my truck run better, or how much power can I put into yep. something. You've taken this aesthetic. I feel like you've brought an aesthetic to the sport, yep. and that's really fantastic. And that goes to a, the other part that you know my father always says is, after you do the three T's, then you do the three G rule, and that's called ask three girls if they'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, if they'll buy it, yeah. that means you made something beautiful. You know, oh. they're the ones that really want to bring. You know, the men, like you said, it's mechanical, and they care about all that techie stuff. But if it's not beautiful, you know, the women yeah. aren't going to bring it into the house. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, man. I mean, I this is the kind of stuff that. Once you've got this thing figured out, you want to end the day, you've got some beautiful things to do it with. Well, hey, congratulations. Thank you so much. It's really a great brand, and uh, I know our, our, our people are watching are going to check it out. The website is barebones. Barebonesliving.com. Barebonesliving.com. Fantastic stuff. I know you'll find it. If you, if you meet me off-road, you're going to find it in my kit, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about what you guys are doing. Hey, thanks so much, Pete. You bet. So when we're on the road, you know, everybody thinks, oh, I better bring a first aid kit. Some of those first aid kit kits start out in the kitchen with a Ziploc bag, a half a box of Band-Aids, maybe a little uh, cream, and I call it a day. Not a good idea when you're off-roading, when you could get seriously hurt, and you're also maybe responsible for more than one person. So if you're running on the trail, you need to think about what do I need to do to handle the personal safety of everybody. The vehicles are one thing, but the people are another. Christian from Uncharted Supply is going to share some of it with us. Christian, how are you? Hey, thanks, Pete. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell us a little about Uncharted Supply, some of the products, and kind of what the story is behind it. Yeah, I started the company about six years ago. And, you know, my background, uh, I grew up on a dairy farm in Wisconsin, just a very outdoors kind of lifestyle. Been to Iraq 39 times. Um, and I moved to Southern California. And I was kind of the first time where I was in a community of people that were kind of counting on somebody else to take care of things that happened you know right. farmers military everybody kind of was like I gotta take care of myself I gotta be the hero of my own story and I got out there and it was a little bit like oh triple A will take care of it or Amazon Prime and um, it just struck me that, that works until it doesn't so we started with building a 72 hour kit uh, being a Midwest guy moving to the coast um, we think about earthquakes you know that's what you hear about right and everybody I talked to said, I need one, but I don't know where to get one. I don't, you know, the ones I find aren't great quality. And that's where it started. So um, today we've got a huge range of products. I'd say we fall into two categories. One is, is like large scale emergency, big stuff that happens. And the other is what I call prepared adventure. So I like to say, get all the way out there and all the way home. So we just build a lot of different products that kind of fit into those two, those two kind of groups. And, you know, our goal is to make sure people live a big, happy, fun life and, and do it safely. So who are your typical customers? I mean, I, I'm, I'm a wilderness MT, so I usually carry a yep. BLS bag in the back of my car. I know how to use it, <clears throat> but most people don't. And they, again, as if I'm gonna lead a, a group, I'm gonna take responsibility for taking care of my people. Right. But what do you start them out with? If somebody came in and said, hey, I, I feel like I need to, something better than the bag of uh, Band-Aids. So, What's your problem? Yeah, yes about the demographic. I mean, I'll say this, like I built, when I built the first kit, what I told people was like, the people I was working with to design it, the first responders and you know mountain guides and see, you know, I worked with all sorts of people and I said, I want something that if you have a 10 year old son at home, 
that you're not there to help them, that this would make a difference. So That's not overly true. complicated, not too heavy, but something that just works for even the most novice person. What's happened is we sell to CIA, FBI, State Department. Sometimes when you build something simple and effective, it just works for everybody. So our demographic's super wide. We sell, sell all over the world. Uh, we're in you know Bass Pro, Cabela's, Sportsman's. We have a big online business. But yeah, that's that's who we sell to, and you know, you're asking about uh, where do people start? Is that is that yeah, kind of where you're yeah. looking to go? So it depends. I always ask people like, what are you doing? Where, where you know, where do you live? What's your day to day? Uh, are you driving? Are you hiking? Are you somebody that's always trail running? We try to kind of solve problems for people wherever they are. So we've got everything from like a four person survival kit in a Yeti box that is just bomb proof and kind of good for the whole family down to a 130 gram first aid and gear repair kit that's not gonna weigh you down if you're trail running. Yeah. So let's, let's pick, let's say we're six people on a trail ride, uh, forest trails, no cell phones, uh, somebody brought a sat phone, bought yeah. it before they left, never used it. Uh, <laughs> Forest trails, but we're going to run into some washouts and stuff. So there's sure. a good risk. Oh, and there's a couple gearheads there, so we're not worried about the trucks. Yeah. But we're yeah. going to be off camber. There's a possibility someone will fall out and break a leg. Yep. What would you recommend for that group? Well, we've got these survival kits over here. Um, we've got this is a partnership with Dex. You know, if you've got a Dex system in your truck, but it's basically the same as we call this the 72 and the 72 Pro, and then we have a base camp which we don't have here, which is the four person. And what these are is they are dry bags, so uh -huh. nothing's going to get wet or moldy or corroded. And then this is what we call the insert, which goes inside of it. So this, this folds up and fits inside. And when I built these products, the goal was not only to have high quality product, but it's to have organization and expert guidance. Because a lot of times, unless you're practicing and doing repetitive kind of behavior, an emergency happens, adrenaline spikes, you start making bad decisions, right? So, you know, here it's like shock, blister, broken bone. If you need to build shelter, it's step-by-step -step instructions. Great. Those are usually are, those are usually printed on little plastic cards. They get wet, full, or bloody. Like, full yes. away as soon as, you, as soon as you open the bag. Yeah, and that's Very why clever. we did that. And then, you know, it's color coordinated. When I open this and I tell somebody, hey, grab the first aid, you're already looking at the red thing, right? Like we do all these things to kind of point people in the right direction to give them what we need. Now, this is probably our most comprehensive kit. I always tell people, if this is all you have, it's great. But you should definitely build it up for whatever you're doing. If you're in a hot environment or a cold environment or you have a different skill set, we've got a lot of room to add stuff. And I think that's an important piece to acknowledge too. But yeah. a great starting point. Great. And so this is water, I'm guessing. It's a water bottle. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we tell people to fill it up, but it's even got instructions on here on how to source more water. Uh -huh. We've got a water filter here, a Sawyer Mini, that'll do 100,000 gallons of water. So you've got two water carriers. You've got, you know, you've got the filter. Um, there's just, there's all sorts of stuff in here. There's two N99 air masks with extra carbon filters. Uh, there's a great multi-tool in here, shovel, paracord, knife, food, a uh, way to charge your phone. You know, just, just, we try to think a you little have, bit of everything. You have thought of everything. Fantastic. Well, well, I'll tell you, for those crews out there, especially the clubs, if you're a Jeep club or a Toyota club, you're getting together on a weekend, you got a couple people that are going to lead trail, ask your team, do you have this among the group? And if you don't, it's an inexpensive investment. I'm going to call it an insurance policy yeah. that you have to have it. And if you decide to use it, not only to, to have in the truck, but to maybe make a meeting out of it and talk about, hey, what do we do in a in a survival scenario? Have you done any speaking or, or talking on the subject? I do. I've given some talks here and there. Um, you know, as, as you spend a lot of time in this, people will know your opinion. So, yeah, I... I I hesitate to ever say I'm an expert because I, I think that's almost a little arrogant. I, I consider myself a student, right? Uh, they say you practice yoga. It's kind of the same thing with this. We're always learning, always evolving, but it's what I think about all the time, and uh, I really believe in what we make. Good. Christian, what's the best way for people to get a hold of your product? Website is unchartedsupplyco.com. Um, you know, we spend a lot on digital ads, so you should be able to type in any of that combination and find us out there somewhere. Super. Well, congratulations. I really appreciate thanks, it. As yeah, a thanks, provider man. myself, it's great to see someone that's put this much thought into it. I appreciate it. it. Thank you. Enjoy the show. You bet. So I'm here with where my new truck started, the, I guess, the birth father of the new <laughs> Old Man Overland truck. I'm here with Dan with Tiny Rigs. Dan, how have you been? Good. Good. So I haven't seen you since you pulled down my driveway, driving yeah. my rig all the way from California to, to Pennsylvania. And all it cost me, aside from the price of the truck, was a cheesesteak. That was a good cheesesteak. Yeah, good cheesesteak. It was a great cheesesteak, but it's an even better truck. So glad to see you. It looks like you're doing great. Tiny Rigs is growing. Why don't you take us through some of the things you're working on? Yeah, so obviously, you know, the alley cab stuff we do. Um, Goose gear, like this is a 4Runner we built out that I'm pretty proud of. Some cool electrical. Um, we've also picked up Scout Campers uh, in the last few months. 
they're making a uh, very simplified RV and kind of bringing it into the overland space. So not a lot of plumbing, not a lot of electrical to go wrong. It's a goal zero and a jerry can. Um, composite panels, super lightweight. So I'm a big fan of those. Um, and other than that, just uh, focused on doing what we do. So, yeah, it looks like it. But Allocab still seems to be a pretty big brand for you. And you're, yeah. you're, the, you're, you're a distributor out in California? Correct. And that is still the core of our business. Core of the business. And I notice a lot of the things that you and I use together, like National Luna, which was in the uh, build I bought from you, the Goose Gear. It's interesting how you built out this Goose Gear thing here. And it looks like, of course, we're big Battleborn fans. Yep. Explain a little more about what you did back here. Yeah, so this customer actually found me through uh, a YouTube video I did uh, before Tiny Rig existed and said, hey, if you built a forerunner for yourself, what would you do? And so, same DNA that's in my Tacoma, uh, we brought into here, so it's got total chaos. Long travel up front, um, but it's got a more modest sized tire, something that I've learned where I'm kind of pushing tires larger than the vehicle wants. So we went more, uh, we'll call it conservative with that, um, but really nice suspension, C4 armor all around, Baja designs all around, how you kept tilting fridge slide, which functions really well. Um, and then uh, a really robust electrical system. So like we crammed 100 amp hours of, of batteries over there. Um, top plate covers it, you don't know it's there and it really only takes up a um, really small amount of space. Um, little National Luna light up here. And then something I'm really proud of is for the Alucab tent for solar and whatnot, uh, there's a naturally a, a drain plug that goes here. Yeah. And we ordered the same Toyota part for their wiring harness, stuck it in the drain plug and so it looks all factory and OEM. Very good. The one thing I will say about Tiny Rig is when, when you build it, you build it right. I mean, I know when I, when I had it, I had our, our friends over in uh, Jersey help me with a couple other things. They said, well, you know, to put that deck underneath it, we're going to have to lift up the camper. And I said, no, don't touch the camper. Don't lift the camper because Dan has sealed it perfectly yep. around hermetically sealed. So it's holding up really great. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. So anyway, it's been a fantastic show. Folks, we're going to wrap it up from here. I'm going to go back and take a look at what these Scout trailers look like. But Dan, it was great to see you. Yeah, you too. Great. For those watching us online, hope you can make it out to an Overland Expo exhibit this year. We look forward to seeing you on the trail.